All right, the unit six test on right triangles. So let's go this, over this step by step, take our time, and ace this test. So for number one, radical two times radical two, or square root of two times square root of two. I'll be using the term radical most times. There's two ways to look at this. The longer way is that radical two times radical two is radical four. And then what's the square root of four? Two. So the answer is D. But we've talked about plenty of times, a radical times itself is just the number under the radical. So radical seven times radical seven is seven. Radical 11 times radical 11 is 11. All right? So there's two ways of thinking about it. Radical two times radical two is just two. The radical goes away. Or you can go to radical 2 times radical 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. All right, on number 2, remember, there's really a 1 outside here, 1 root 3 times 2 radical 5. Now, remember, we do the inside times the inside and outside times the outside only. So on the outside, we have 2 times 1, which is just 2. And on the inside, we have radical 5 times radical 3, which is radical 15. And we always want to check, will the radical 15 break down to any perfect squares? The answer here is no. There's no perfect square, such as 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so forth, that go into 15. So it's as simplified as it can be. All right, Pythagorean theorem. Remember, the key to the Pythagorean theorem is always identify where that hypotenuse is. And that's going to be our C. The Pythagorean theorem, remember, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's not a bad idea to write that at the beginning of these problems. And then just fill in what you have. So on number three, it doesn't matter which is a or b. We are missing a side. So if you want to call that a and this b, that's fine. So we're missing a side, a squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Now you just crunch the numbers. So 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. I don't have a lot of room, so I'm not going to show minus 16 on both sides. 25 minus 16 is 9. And then to undo square perfect square, a squared, we square root the two, a squared here, and get three. So the answer is B, three miles. Over here, notice we have, again, it doesn't matter what you call A and B, we have 12 squared plus five squared equals C squared. All right, so that's 144 plus 25 equals c squared. Well, 144 plus 25 is 169 equals c squared. Then we take the square root of c squared and the square root of 169, and we get 13, which is answer D. Also remember that our hypotenuse should be the biggest number. So in this case, it should be bigger than 5 and 12. All right? So right off the bat, you know C was not a possible answer. Okay? Now, on number 3, my answer should be smaller than 5 because 5 is the hypotenuse of the biggest side. So 6 was not a possible answer. Whenever you can remove possible answers from multiple choice, do so. It's a good test-taking strategy. All right. 45, 45, 90s. Remember the pattern for this is that the legs are equal on a 45, 45, 90. And the hypotenuse is just the leg times root 2. So on number 5, again, always identify your hypotenuse. So U is the hypotenuse, V is another leg, which means this and this are both 6. So we're looking for an answer where V is 6. Right off the bat, we know C and D are out. 
all right? Again, good test-taking skills. We know this is 6, and that's V. Label as much as you can to keep from making simple mistakes, which means now all we do is write 6 and put a root 2 on it. So our answer is A. Okay, over here on number 6, identify the hypotenuse first. Okay, why is my other leg. So that's going to be 3 root 2. So I'm looking for my answers. This is not y equals 3 root 2, and neither is this. So those two are out, which means it's a or b. So this is going to be 3 root 2 times root 2. And this takes us back to the first problem. 3 times Root 2 times root 2 is just simply 2. So that's 6. So my hypotenuse is 6. That again is answer A. All right, now we're going backwards. Now this I'm going to label is 45. X and Y should be the same. All right, now all my choices are the same. X and Y, so that doesn't rule anything out. So remember, if we're going from this side to this side, we're getting smaller. And the magic number we use is radical 2, so that means instead of multiplying for radical 2, we're going to divide by radical 2. And in this case, that's easy. Those cancel, which means my answer is B. Both of these are 4. And again, if you want to go back this way, just think about it. I would just take 4 and put a radical 2 on it, and I have that. So you can double check your work. So again, here's 45. Here's my hypotenuse. So to go to the leg, I'm going to divide by radical 2. Now notice there's no answer like that because we cannot leave radical 2 in the bottom, so we have to rationalize. So on the top, I get 4 radical 2, and on the bottom, I simply get 2. We've already talked about this. Again, none of my answers match, so I need to simplify. 2 goes into 4 two times. So my answer simply is 2 radical 2 for A and B. So that's not A. Look, B is definitely wrong because they don't even match. C is 4 radical 2. That's not correct. So my answer is D, 2 radical 2 for both. All right, now we're moving on to 30, 60, 90. Remember, label everything you can. Here's my 30. Here's my hypotenuse. All right, the short side is the most important. We have the short side. It's opposite 30. Draw the arrows in. So the relationship, remember, on a 30, 60, 90 is very simple. Okay? If my short side is x, then my hypotenuse is simply 2x. And my longer leg is x times radical 3. So, right off the bat, if my short side is 10, that means A has to be 20. Well, all my choices are 20, so that doesn't really... Oh, no, it doesn't. Never mind. I lied. Look, B says A is 20 radical 2, and B, C says 20 radical 2. Those are both wrong. Let's get rid of them. Now, going from my short side to the longer leg, I just tack on a radical 3. 10 radical 3. So that is choice A, not D. Okay, let's see what I have here. Now this time, notice I have my longer side. So that's not the best situation, but we can make it work. You always want to go to the short side first. Now what's the relationship between these two? A radical 3. So common sense says, if I'm going from the longer side to the shorter side, 
That means I'm getting smaller, so I am going to be dividing by radical 3. Well, that's simple enough. That cancels. So my short side is 8. So I'm looking for V of 8. Well, that's easy because there's only one V of 8. There's U of 8, but you got to pay attention to the letters. And the simple fact is 8 to the hypotenuse is just double it, so that's 16. So that is choice C. Okay, again, I have a 30, 60, 90. This time I have my hypotenuse. So remember, we always want to go to the short side first. The short side is Y. The relationship is times 2 or divide by 2. If I'm getting smaller, I'm going to divide by 2. So that means Y is 7. Well, that rules out this answer and this answer. And then it's really easy to go from the short side to the longer side. We just tack on a radical 3. So that rules out this one, and my answer is B. Again here, this was a little trickier. I have my hypotenuse. I always want to go to the short side. Where is that? Opposite to 30. So I'm going to go here to B. Remember, you just divide by 2. So 4 radical 3 divided by 2 is 2 radical 3. So we're looking for B of 2 radical 3. That's either A or D. So I know this is 2 radical 3. And then to go to the longer side, I am simply going to multiply by radical 3. So I'm going to come down here and take 2 radical 3 times radical 3 again. We talked about this trick. You can think of it as radical 9, which is 3, or just simply radical 3 times radical 3 is 3, which makes the longer side 6. So that rules out A. My answer is D. Okay, so Katoa. Find the missing side. So from my angle, which is right here, 68, I have, I do not have the hypotenuse, no number of the hypotenuse. So if I don't have the hypotenuse, I'm not doing sine or cosine, it's tangent. So right off the bat, I know I can write tangent of 68 degrees, okay? Then, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from 68, the 15 is opposite, and the adjacent is x. Now, when my x is on the bottom, I just pull a switcheroo and say x equals 15 divided by tangent of 68. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator, or my scientific calculator on Desmos. Again, to refresh my memory, it's 15 divided by tan 68. So 15 divided by, here's tangent, of 68 degrees. And that gives me 6.06. .06. So this is a tricky one because obviously it's not going to be this. But 6.06, .06, we're rounding obviously to this spot. So does the 6 tell the 0 to round up or down? It tells it to round up to 6.1 because it's bigger than 5 or bigger than 4. Okay, so that's a tricky one. That's a distractor, the 6.0. Be careful. Look at your rounding. The 6 tells this to round up to 6.1. Number 14, here's my angle. I do have the hypotenuse, which means I'm either doing sine or cosine. So I got to find out, do I have the opposite side or the adjacent side? Well, 15 is way over here, opposite. That's opposite, and that's hypotenuse. And if it helps to label like that, back on number 13, this is adjacent, and this is opposite. 
okay? If it helps, do that. So, OH, that's sine. Sokotoa, sine. Of 41 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Again, X is on the bottom, so I do the switcheroo. X equals 15 divided by sine of 41. So I go back to my calculator and do 15 divided by sine. I forgot, was it 41? 41, always best to be safe. Whoops. 41 equals 22.86. Twenty two point eight six. So again, these are rounded to the 10 spot. So this is going to tell the eight to round up to twenty two point nine. All right, here's my angle. I don't have my hypotenuse, so it's got to be tangent. So right at the bat, I can write tangent of 42 equals. Now, what do I have from 42? This is my opposite, and this is right next door, my adjacent. So TOA, opposite over adjacent. So this is very easy to do. You just simply multiply both sides by 20. So on my calculator, I'm going to type 20 times tan 42. 20 times tangent of 42. And that gives me 18.00. So pretty easy rounding there. It's just 18.0. Number 16, here's my angle. Okay, I do have a hypotenuse marked. So sine or cosine. And then I have opposite. So since I have opposite and hypotenuse, that's so sine of 18 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to do the old switcheroo. X equals 11 divided by sine of 18. So 11 divided by sine of 18, that gives me 35.59, 35.59. So the nine is gonna tell the five to round up, and actually this is the only one even close with 35, so there's our answer. Seventeen. Again, we have our angle, <clears throat> and we have the hypotenuse marked, so that's H. The 15 is close to the 51, so that's adjacent. So right off the bat, we know that's Ka cosine of 51 degrees. Now remember, cosine is A adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, we have the switcheroo, 15 over cosine of 51. 15 divided by cosine 51. That's 23.83. 23.83. And finally, we have one that tells you to round down because 3 is less than 4. Remember, 0 to 4 round down, 5 and above round up. So that tells me to round to 23.8, which is answer C. Okay, number 18. Again, I have the hypotenuse, but this time I have the adjacent side. So hypotenuse, I guess we had that in the last one, so never mind. Adjacent. So again, that's cosine of 29 degrees equals ah adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is the one when the number is on the bottom where we just simply multiply by 11. So 
I'm going to type in 11 times cosine of 29. 11 times cosine of 29. And that gives me 9.62. Again, we have a round down to 9.6. Moving on. Find the measure. Now remember, this is an inverse. As soon as you see you're trying to find a measure, you're doing an inverse, which means you're going to do that tan negative 1, cosine negative 1, sine negative 1 button, which is under function on that calculator. I can type, right? Let's try that again. Still can't write. Okay, function. So from this angle, what do I have? I have all the way over here my opposite, and I have the hypotenuse. So that's O. That's sine. If I'm doing sine negative 1, okay, that's what we're going to type in, but I can just sort of write it like this. Sine of an angle, theta, whoops. Sine of theta equals opposite 45 over 54. Now to solve this, we're going to type in sine negative 1, 45 over 54. So we go to our calculator. We hit function, sine negative 1, and I missed it. Close it again. 45 over 54. We go back to main to type in the numbers, 45 divided by 54. And that gives us 56.44. Remember, we round to the nearest angle. So 56.4 rounds down to 56. Number 20, we're trying to find the angle. What do we have? We do not have the hypotenuse, so that means it's tangent. So 22 is opposite, 27 is adjacent. So tangent of some angle equals opposite over adjacent, TOA. So we're gonna type in tan negative one, 22 divided by 27. And sorry, over here, I don't know why I wrote an equal sign. So over here, go to their calculator. Tan negative 1. So we got a function. Tan negative 1. Go back to main. 22 divided by 27. 39.17. Thir 39.17, so that is going to round down to 39 degrees. Moving on, last two. So again, we're trying to find our angle. We have our hypotenuse. And from this angle, 10 is the adjacent because it's real close nearby. I just can't write an A, apparently. All right, so ah is cosine of our angle, theta, equals ah adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to type in cosine negative 1, 10 divided by 12. So function... Cosine negative 1, back to main, 10 divided by 12. So we get 33.55. 33.55. So the 5 tells the 3 to round up to 34. Last but not least, we do not have our hypotenuse. 
So we know it's tangent. The 24 is opposite all the way over there. 39 is A. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to type in tan negative 1, 24 over 39. So function tan negative 1, 24 over 39. So go back to main, 24 divided by 39. And I get 31.6. So that is 6 tells the 1 to round up to 32. And that is it.